Signal detected. Initiating signal boost. Welcome to Signal Boost, brought to you by the X.FM, your weekly source for news from the Matrix Online. Hello, and welcome to a special edition of Signal Boost. As you may know, the X.FM recently hosted a series of live broadcasts from the San Diego Comic Con. During that time, they managed to score interviews with both Paul Chadwick, the writer of The Matrix Online and the artist for the new cinematics, as well as Walrus, MXO's producer. We're pleased to present to you the recordings of these interviews in case you didn't catch them the first time around. Please note that due to some technical difficulties, the second interview was cut short and was not recorded completely. Enjoy. What's going on, you guys? This is DJ Mave here on XFM. We are broadcasting, like I said, several times, and I will say it again because this is like one of those once-in-a-lifetime opportunities that only happens once in a lifetime. We are broadcasting live here at the SOE Block Party over here in San Diego, California. I am having a very good time. Uh, everyone else here is having a very good time. It's interesting. We've actually had a couple of uh, MXL player turnouts. We actually have an anonymous, uh, uh, anonymous player give a shout out to the Furious Angels. So he says hello. And as I'm speaking right now, the one, the only, Paul Chadwick is on his way here to the XFM booth. So I just like to say, Mr. Chadwick, how's it going? Just a little high out there. Uh, right now I am currently live. Uh, we are having none other than the Paul Chadwick join us here on XFM. He's having a seat right now. We got him a nice little director's chair. So we are very pleased to have him. How are we doing today, Mr. Chadwick? It's nice and warm here. It is. Well, welcome to California. <laughs> so, uh, you having a good time so far? Yes. This is bigger and noisier than I expected. <laughs> well, I know it's no Comic-Con, but hey, we try to keep it a uh, party as we can. It is no Comic-Con, that's true. <laughs> you can actually move across this uh, this area without uh, pushing away through a thousand people. But uh, even then, if I wanted to, I could push a couple people around. So, uh, go, you're Paul Chadwick. People will move for you, so don't even worry about that one. Oh, right. <laughs> so anyway, uh, like I said, we are here uh, live on XFM. Uh, is there anything you want to let the players know who are listening right now? Well, I should have prepared a little something, shouldn't I? Um, don't worry, I'm not prepared either, so we can just wing it. <laughs> we've, uh, we've got a lot in store for the next year. Um, you, you should probably prompt me with questions. Ah, touche, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we started work on, on the second year. Oh yeah, yeah. The 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 outline is uh, is pretty complete. Some of the, some of the last months are not as detailed as the as the early months, but uh, we're trying to compress some events so things move a little bit faster than uh, they have in the in the in the recent past. Yeah, uh, we actually got a chance to speak with Chad for a little while. Uh, well, Chadwick, sorry. <laughs> Already I have a nickname. You give everybody <laughs> nicknames like the president. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we have a moment to speak. And uh, Mr. Chadwick here actually would love the storyline to flow a lot faster from what we gathered. And uh, one of the other things we mentioned, and this is just a little side thing, uh, Mr. Chadwick here, uh, computer seems to crash a lot. So here on XFM, <laughs> we're going to try. You're telling all my <laughs> embarrassing secrets. Well, no, see, this is a good thing because we here at XFM are going to try to put some uh, money together and we're going to get you a game oh, no, PC. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the community would love to, like, you know, pitch in one or two bucks or something and we can get you a nice tower so you can uh, enjoy the Matrix experience just as much as we can. Oh, I'm getting embarrassed now. <laughs> okay, uh, well, we have some of the questions here popping in the IRC. Uh, TX Turbo has those questions, so TX, if you want to shoot off the question. The, uh, the most common question we're getting is... What, what is with the, uh, the lasers? Is there anything you can tell us about the lasers in the last cinematic? Without giving away too much? Um, I 
Well, it's it's clear where they're coming from, right? Yes. Yes. Definitely coming from the, uh, the new NPCs that are suddenly taking over buildings all over the place. Yeah, they're the elixirs that were in the uh, the case that the uh, the general put people on uh, the trail of, and um, we're going to learn the uh, origin of why those codes were created uh, by the machines. And the machines will be very, very desperate to secure them again. And of course, uh, other organizations and, and, and individual red pills, it's the universal uh, 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 truth that people seek power, people seek advantage. So it's a whole lot of trouble in uh, one attache case. And a lot of the story will revolve around Eno, who's a very disturbed individual. And we'll learn why, and it's a very Matrix-related reason why. He didn't have just a bad childhood. He had an absurdly insane childhood because of growing up in the Matrix. Very interesting. I've, I'm already uh, hyped up and ready for the uh, next chapters and all that. I'm pretty sure a lot of you listeners are as well. So, uh, Turbo... By the way, the next question. What, um, what can you tell us about the Jokers that have been showing up on all three servers? The what? The Jokers. Uh, well, somebody asked, uh, what is up with all the Jokers popping up on all the uh, servers? Of course, uh, we know them as the uh, Joker of Diamonds, Clubs, Spades, and Hearts. So, take it away. Well, uh, you know what? I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> I think that will become clear pretty soon. <laughs> As soon as uh, Mr. Chadwick said that, everybody here at the uh, table just went, oh, I'm pretty sure you guys picked that up, but that, yeah, that's the same feeling. But hey, you know, it is a secret for a reason, so Turbo, fire away the next question. Oh, I'm sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, that was uh, Mass Attack here from the Black Market, uh, Vector. Oh, pick up the sunglasses, you know I am. <laughs> so, Turbo, go ahead. We should, you know, we should set the scene here if you haven't. This is uh, an open area with, uh, it's actually a parking lot, but um, has umbrella tables everywhere and, and like wedding type tents where the games are playing and um, people are talking with developers. And it's, it's your typical leafy um, Southern California industrial park, maybe, maybe a little cooler looking than, uh, than some. It is a nice area. I mean, and there's a dunking tank, which... Uh, <laughs> Walrus, yeah. <laughs> is he already in it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mr. Chadwick, if you You like. know, in this heat, I envy him. <laughs> Mr. Chadwick, I mean... Like, I, I shouldn't mean. give you any ideas, though. Oh, that'd be funny. <laughs> if you want to go knock down Walrus, Mr. Chadwick, we will follow you, and we will give you up-to-the-minute coverage on that. Well, we should keep one eye. I think... We uh, should all go and just press the stupid so button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he goes. Oh. There he goes. <laughs> Walrus just got dropped. Oh, I've never seen walrus in skin-tight cotton. <laughs> um, uh, moving on. <laughs> but yeah, uh, go ahead, Turbo, fire away with the next question. Um, uh, approximately, I mean, do you play the Matrix Online very often? Do you enjoy getting in-game and interacting with the community? I've had some great experiences in-game, but I have to be honest, I'm not in there every night or every week even. Um, I'm, I'm generally there for all the live, uh, the big live events, and, uh, it's really rare, but it keeps me up to date with what's happening. I check in with him a lot. Awesome. How, how do you feel that the, the Leasing is doing? Thank goodness for Leasing, and I could use more, I, uh, I could use ideas on how better to use them. I think they're a little underutilized, and they're probably the best, uh, tool we have to advance the story um, since you know NPCs and so on take time to program and design and set up and all that but here we have all these people ready to jump into roles uh, I don't remember what, what the name of the event was but uh, it was uh, what's the Egyptian themed club the, the Sphinx? Sphinx. Uh, Sphinx? Yes that uh, Merovingian uh, uh, General's Commandos confrontation there. I thought uh, that was a particularly successful uh, little uh, role-playing 
event. Yeah, it was about uh, four, four or five months ago, right? Awesome. Well, how how do you feel? Have you have you had any experiences in the game where maybe a live event didn't come off as you thought it should, or <laughs> anything that technically, you know, technology messed up and stuff didn't happen right? Oh, I tend to put those painful memories uh, away. Um, Let me think on that one for a bit. Maybe we should return to that. <laughs> All right. But, yeah, you know, you always dream... I, 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 I tell the technical guys, I always ask them for the sun, the moon, and the stars, and I, I settle for the moon and the stars. <laughs> There's only so much they can do, isn't there? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> With the time and, and effort that they're given. It's, it's excellent to see how involved you are with, with getting into the game. Um, what, what do you think of the community of MXO? Oh, thank goodness. You know, we were sort of down to the hardcore who were really dedicated. And uh, I think everybody who's in the game wants it to, to work. And um, we have very few grief players. I guess along the way somebody's been banned now and then. But... Uh, uh, I don't know, it, it, it seems like uh, there are a lot of serious players. They're not just kind of waiting around for the next uh, set of missions. Awesome. Do you know of any, of any plans that Sony might have coming up for promoting the game or trying to get more people into the game? I understand that the trial was, was quite a success. It, it was pretty successful, yeah. Yeah, we were happy with that. Um, Walrus is the guy to talk to about that. I am not an official Sony guy. I'm a freelancer, uh, a contractor. So uh, that's why I occasionally get to say things a little off the reservation. <laughs> but I'm also not as uh, up to date on all their plans. And what Sony's doing. I'm yeah. It's still... awesome. Um, they're also asking, when is a uh, new version of, of the Sentinel planned on coming out? Any hints you could give us on No, that? i, I got to remember what my deadline is. Uh, it's coming up in a few days. I think I'm going to have to hand it in on Tuesday or, 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 or Wednesday. And it goes to a web uh, designer. And uh, all those hidden pages uh, with the hidden links now, it, uh, it takes a little longer than it was in the beginning. But that's okay. Because uh, I, I I rather enjoy the subterranean story that isn't the official story you read. That's awesome. So there are actually side stories that you're carrying on within the Sentinel. Well, you know when the when the uh, Zion and and the machines and so on they hack the Sentinel, they can tell the real truth behind the story. That I mean, the premise of the Sentinel is written by blue pills. They don't know that exactly what's going on but their stories reflect what's really going on in in that half drugged way that I, I always think blue pills are experiencing the matrix life very interesting very cool indeed well the um, uh, final question that I've got for you um, with the storyline progressing as now Neo doesn't come back next month it's uh, it's in December that no <laughs> oh! Giving away storyline hits. Uh oh. <laughs> um, well, last question I have for you: Have you have you managed to take a look at, or have you seen anything about the Mega City Times, the the player run sort of red pill version of the Sentinel? Where is it? Well, no, I haven't. We'll have to get and you. How many how many editions have there been? There have been two editions. They put out two so far. Now, did I did I see this? It, it, it's like a mock sentinel that was on a, one of the threads in the forums? Yes. That's exactly what it is. You know, the day before I came down here, I, I found that and said, wait a minute, I don't remember writing this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I, you know, I was getting all my stuff ready for the convention, all the artwork and so on, so I didn't read it, actually. So that's what that is. Yes. Very awesome. We'll have to get you a copy. And it did seem to, it did seem to be... Red Pill written. Yes. I've got some. These people know the score. Awesome. Very interesting. Well, I I love the culture that grows up around these games. That uh, I wish they could all be preserved on on uh, a web archive somewhere. 
when uh, we were starting, um, and Warner Brothers was spending millions because this was sure to be the next World of Warcraft, um, I suggested that we 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 create a documentary of the history that's created, you know, with with uh, fraps recorded footage and and all the sentinels and 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 uh, maybe even reenactments of of things that happened, and that idea had to go by the wayside. But uh, you know, in a in a shared uh, endeavor like this, we're we're creating culture, we're creating story and and uh, moments of human interaction, and uh, it's really interesting to look back on that. So I I I love it when people. Uh, Record their adventures in the Matrix, or, or, or do news digests, or anything like that. It's very good to hear. That's awesome to have that encouragement. Well, of course, uh, I don't know. I can't speak for all the community, but a good chunk of us, we would have none of this if it wasn't for you writing the storyline and keeping us in this game. Because, of course, the live events and, of course, your story is what really keeps us here. I mean, we've made friends along the way and all this stuff, but we love, I personally, I love your work. I love the uh, storyline. It's very interesting, the twist and all this stuff. It's just interesting. And we all look forward to seeing what's going to come up soon with uh, the next couple of months. So. Well, that's great to hear. My, my orientation is, is kind of psychological. That I think there's a lot of uh, potential in the Matrix premise for uh, exploring what motivates people and, and and how they react to all the forces of uh, of growing up. Maybe I'm working some personal stuff out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, for those of you who can't see us, we are actually huddled around uh, Mr. Chadwick here. We are we're basically hailing the man who writes the storyline here right now. We're gathered in a little circle like it's a campfire. And of course, uh, if anyone has any other questions around the circle, if you guys don't mind, well, Mr. Chadwick, of course, if you don't mind, answer a couple questions from the No, here. fire away. You guys have any questions around here? We have, uh, of course, uh, Tasty Wheat, Blaze, and a couple other people around here. Turn around. Let see your attention. Oh, it has to go on your body, not on your head. Come on. We have. We have we have a lot of people. So, um, if anybody has any questions, oh, we have midnight. Midnight. Go ahead. Midnight. Can we? Oh, yeah, thank you. Oh. He hates it when I take the microphone right. from him. Come on, you can get can it we, in. as a storyline, uh, expect anything completely opposite of what we were so sure was going to happen? Completely opposite of what? Like, what we believe is going to happen, is there something possibly coming that could be completely like, wow, that's not what we thought was going to happen. Are you tricking us? Are you tricking us? <laughs> what she means is, is, is Morpheus really dead or not? <laughs> oh, the obvious question finally came out. <laughs> or like the oracle takes the mask off and it's really the Merv. <laughs> well, there is a character that you've been deeply misled about uh, his his motivations and attitudes and uh, I hope it'll be a surprise when when we learn the truth about him and I've already given him the uh, the gender away but uh, <laughs> let me just say that the Wachowskis do not kill their characters lightly and um, you never say never but uh, um, they didn't kill Morpheus to bring him back right away. That's right, folks. You heard it here first on XFM. <laughs> 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 they don't know that. I mean, uh, yes. <laughs> All right, we've got one more question here. So this is uh, Phelan, the co-founder of the Kings and Ever on Recursion. Do you have Welcome. an RSI that uh, we can... Uh, Look forward to seeing you jacked in every once in a while. <laughs> I can see the spam flying in now. Uh, I find it uh, advantageous to be incognito. Uh, <laughs> just to, just, oh. <laughs> just because I don't want to embarrass myself. All you guys, you know, you're all 50 le level 50 players with a huge experience, and, and you can swap out abilities in the blink of an eye, and uh, I'm just kind of limping along a mid-level player, so... Uh, 
be, be kind to those uh, those apparent newbies, because uh, might be me. Well, tell you what, Mr. Chadwick, if you're ever on recursion, send a tell over to Maeve, M-A-V-E, and I promise you I will grind you to level 50 like there is no tomorrow. <laughs> I will even teach you the art of the punt and all the other fun uh, things we can do at level 50. But hey, you know, it's up to you. Okay, here here's the confession. I don't even know what a punt is. What? A <gasps> I don't know if you guys know this, but my heart just skipped the beat. My heart just skipped the beat. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you. Oh, oh! I think the punt master should get up for this one. <laughs> we are actually showing uh, Mr. Chadwick what a punt is. Oh, yo! Oh, thank goodness this is a virtual game without. Actually, uh, Mr. Chadwick, if you ever on a recursion, you see a pale, naked man running around Mars C, <laughs> kicking people like that. That would be me. <laughs> okay. So watch out for the pasty plunger. But uh, apparently, it's not all about story. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, let me ask some questions about uh, player culture. Um, what's with this running around in your underwear thing? <laughs> I think uh, Mr. Chadwick referring to the fact that I'm here in my. Uh, <laughs> I, okay, well, backstory. I bought a pair of boxers at Target, and I bought a Sharpie, and I colored hearts on them. And I guess I'm sitting here doing the interview in these boxers, so it's a long story. I can show you the thread, but I made Please a thread. specify over some pants, okay? Yeah, they're okay, over they're, some pants. Yeah, they're over some pants, He's got folks. a shirt on. He's, uh, he's quite presentable. I, I, well, but no, no, I actually meant in the game. In the game. What? You it's know a, what it is? It's just be funny. It's yeah. funny, you know? It's, it's self-expression. It, it, yeah, you know, some people, you know, some people write stories, some people draw, some people paint. I PvP like naked. <laughs> it's just my form I of can, expression. Yeah, I can <laughs> understand. It's a good thing we uh, compel to wear underwear. But don't worry, I do go fully clothed when events show up, so. <laughs> but uh, if you have any more questions for us, we'd be more than happy to answer them for uh, you. Essentially, I was over there watching Walk Walrus... Uh, fight some people on Vector, and of course he got completely destroyed and died in like 30 seconds. <laughs> just because, you know, he didn't play a lot, and he was looking the other way talking to somebody. He was distracted, is, what, is, is the story that we're using. But, right after they killed him... Oh, uh, technical difficulties? Alright, there we go. I'll back up. Warris was pwned on, on Vector, and um, after they killed him, they took off their pants and sat on his face. Just to... <laughs> That's just. That's just. That would be Darkwing. No, I'm not sure who it was. I don't. I don't remember the name. And that's not uncommon at all. That's. That, that's what they do. To, it's. It's like you know when lions fighting. Well, what animal is it that does stuff like that? Baboons. You know how they just kind of do. You know, they, show, they have to show off that they're the man. And yeah. It's, it's just for fun. That's I dig it. I dig it. You know, boy, if there's a capability you accidentally put in a game, people will find it. People will find it. What are the big hangouts besides Mara Central? Oh, uh, well, on recursion we have Kamen Heights Central or Kamen C. We that's another that's mostly the RP or the role playing hangout over on recursion. Yeah. I can't speak for syntax or vector, so if you guys have any locations on uh, on syntax, you're going to find a lot of people at the Tabor West hardline, and you also find a lot of people around both of the Uriah hardlines. Mara C is mostly for people that are that are going to PVP or, or spam. Uh, <laughs> right. Spam for the yeah. win. So Mara Central is like spam. If you're looking Central. for, for uh, role playing characters into the storyline, you're most likely going to find them at Tabor West and on syntax. Okay. Okay. Uh, other hard lines people are telling me is Uriah Northwest and Tabor West as well. That's just what, yeah. I, that's so. what I just said. I guess, you can, add, uh, can you add uh, Vector and Magog West? On Vector, hey, it's Magog West. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh -huh. So I guess to summarize it, we have, of course, Spam Central, as uh, Massatec called it, Mara Central. We have both the Raya hard lines, Tabor West, and uh, Magog, was it West or East? Magog West. Magog West, so... Uh, just check those hard lines when you're flying around on all three servers, and you're bound to find something. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question. Um, well, hello. Okay, so Mr. Chadwick, if uh, hello, my name is Master Tech, and I'm from Vector, and I have a simple question. It's an RP question. If you were to build a black market, uh, you know, a faction that sells stuff, what organization would you align it to? <laughs> Logically speaking, 
Oh, Zion doesn't need any more factions, or, you know, doesn't need any more orcs. Uh, yeah, that seems like something the Merovingian faction would do. Yeah, you realize by doing that, you just cause like 18 threads of flame. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that or the massive I mean, jump from that Zion was such to a Mary. loaded question. I, I should have stopped it, but that was, that was still loaded. <laughs> What has this been, uh, been being debated right now? There's a faction called the Black Market on on Vector that actually does that. I don't think they're Merv. Actually, Master Tech is from the Black Market, and he's a he's in the Zion. Yeah, I'm the second in command yeah, on there, so we might just yeah. go Merv. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right. Right. Edit that out. Influences. Edit that out. With, it's a surprise. <laughs> no. Let me send out a request, by the way. Sure. Uh, I've been downloading a lot of shots on the 100 places thread, and we don't have enough, and we don't have enough pretty stuff. I I think I'd like I'd like some uh, more water venues, and some more of the uh, the decorative details on buildings in downtown and uh, um, and the international district especially. I don't think we have much at all from that. Inside or outside or both? Inside or outside or both? There's something unusual inside. You know, I, I guess newbie would ne never see those tea rooms and things like that. We ought to have something like that. Um, the point is, we're going to make these available in a way for newbies to see that you know these there are these cool places in the Matrix you can't get to now, but if you stick with it, you can and uh, engage people's sense of curiosity. And, and we also have some events planned around them that you know, in their simplest forms, are uh, you know, you got to tag each one in sequence, and uh, you get a merit badge for it. But um, I'd really like to revive that. That's a pet project of mine. That uh, I'd like to go with that. But yeah, uh, well, if you'd like the help of us in terms of like you know getting graphics or helping noobs out, just say the word and we'll line up. And I know I will anyway to help out. Anything to help the game. At least that's how I see it. Well, great. We also need all the monuments. Oh yeah. So. Uh, We've we've only we've only got a couple so far. You hear that, guys? Especially Sykin. I want you to take all the screenshots and do your thing to make them really pretty. Yeah, we have. Have you actually uh, had a chance to look at the uh, RSI idealist thread, where a lot of people just work on uh, photoshopping a lot of the images? And some of the stuff is really fantastic. Like uh, Sykin is a couple of people who's doing the RSI idealist. Aquadium. Now, what, under what category is that? Um, check the forums. We have things under RSI idealist. Residual self-image. There we go. Yeah. But uh, we have a lot of people who do a lot of really nice artwork with just screenshots. They'll get screenshots and make them fabulous and wonderful things. I am so embarrassed I haven't explored that at all. It sounds like exactly my kind of thing. They have a Gunman tournament poster. It's awesome. It just oh, yeah. We, we even when we set up tournaments, uh, that was actually that was from Aquadium. We set up a uh, nice little picture for a Gunman tournament. It's just like a guy standing with one gun in one hand, standing in a foresty area, and NPCs everywhere. But it's not just that. We do artwork for, like, areas. People actually Photoshop their characters into, like, shots from the movies and stuff like that. It's, it's all so much Oh, it sounds super. Let me add a computer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks, you heard it first. Here on uh, um, I have another question. Now, regarding that thread that requested 100 places, what exactly, specifically, is it that you're looking for? Because, I mean, when you mission, there are complete rooms. They're very, very well designed. But then when you finish the mission, you can't go in there normally. So what is it that you're actually looking for? No, no, no. We don't, don't do it in, in missionaries. They, mission areas, excuse me. Um, don't get any missionaries either. They should be places that uh, people can visit, but they might be in really dangerous areas, so you can't do it until you're high level. It's more of downtown. Yeah, a lot more downtown, more the international district. You know, an, an obvious example is the uh, building that Neo went into at the very end of the movie, you know. Where is that place? What, what, what's the official name for that? Which one? Uh, the uh, place where Neo goes into the through the metal, metal detectors and destroys the whole building. Oh, the government building. The government building is, is an obvious one, but I think you mean stuff that's kind of like that, but not not necessarily that one is specific, but things things along those lines. Yeah, and anything that's unique in the world that you know uh, when you're creating a world that big, you reuse assets a lot, and you know all the churches are alike and so on, but. Uh, you know, those 
like the stone lions uh, in Stamos next to the hard lion and, and just, just anything unusual, especially the things that are really different from the slums where you start out. That's what I'm after. Well, I'm sure uh, a lot of our RSI idealists are tuning in right now and they just heard that, so... We're going uh, to use the tur- sign from Turbo here. We're going to wrap it up. So, Mr. Chadwick, thank you very much. Well, thank you. For uh, taking the time out to talk to us. Uh, I'm getting Academy. applause. Big old applause. Of course, we are the Matrix nerds here. And if you can't hear, we're just going nuts. They're, yeah, they're probably going nuts on the IRC channel right now. So, again, thank you very much, Mr. Chadwick, for That's joining us. That's great to hear. And, we, uh, we can do this later. I'm going to be here another hour. Oh, fantastic. Uh, so, RSI Idealist, you heard it. Start getting stuff done for uh, Mr. Chadwick here. Keep it locked into XFM as we give you further news and updates here, possibly an interview with the one and only Walrus up in the coming later tonight. Until then, keep it locked into XFM here live at the SOE Block Party in San Diego, California. What's going on, you guys? This is DJ Maeve here on XFM. And, of course, it is time for the interview with the one and only Walrus. And, of course, by surprise, we are also joined by the one and only Paul Chadwick. So they are both actually sitting by side by side. I don't know how. this. I'm glad we're outdoors because so much awesomeness cannot be contained <laughs> in a single room, folks. I mean, literally, I almost fly back from so much awesomeness in the area. But anyway... We're going to get this interview started. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Walrus for uh, taking the time out to talk to us here on XFM. Not a problem. Alrighty, And, of course, we are joined here by DJ Tasty Wheat. He is... Hey, I'm DJ Tasty Wheat. I... T- Turbo got to talk, got to interview Paul Chadwick. And since we're, since we're down to Walrus, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, I'll be finding back and forth just because I love doing this. So, uh, anyway... We will get this interview started, <laughs> and of course, I'm going to hand this over down to DJ Tasty Wheat, who will start asking questions we have posted on the forums and whatnot, and of course, the questions which all came from you guys, the players, and the community here on MXO and XFM. So, Tasty Wheat, take it away. Yeah, just so you know, before before we really get into it, and to pay homage to Rarebit, you are allowed to gong future release any question that's asked. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Some of these first questions Dong. will probably be gone. Oh, questions. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Retro wants to know, when will we get the faction constructs? Um, I don't know that we have any current plans to do the faction constructs. Can I get a gong instead? Um, actually, it depends It depends on what you're talking about. If you're talking about, well, the faction constructs, that I don't know if we're going to get. Okay. The constructs for the orgs is part of the white hallways. So, now can I ask you a technical question on, on that? Uh, you can try. All right. <laughs> the white hallways that are going to be are those separate white, white hallways from the other white hallways that everyone's going to, or are they going to be the same white hallways and they're just going to be used to, in the missions? They're going to be the same white hallways that you'll be able to get to without exploiting and getting kicked out of the okay, game. So you're going to be moved. It's going to be a teleportation from point A to point B. Exactly. So if two people are running the mission at the same time, are they going to run into each other in the same white hallway? You know, you'd have to ask Rarebit that. Uh, there's a distinct... Hey, well, there's a reason for that. Uh, um, oh, there's a distinct oh, possibility that could happen, but I would have to talk to Because that Rarebit. would actually be really cool. I have, players would like that. Okay. So don't. If, if, it, if it does happen, we like that. That's, that's cool. I'll keep that in mind. Will MXO work in Vista? Because word on the street is right now it doesn't. Uh, that I don't know. I don't know if we've done compatibility testing on Vista yet. So. Alright. Do you feel that there's, um, that, you know, we're, we're spending about a month between each, each chapter mm-hmm. on a good month. Do you feel that that's, is that, are we going to keep up that same pace or is it ever going to speed up a little bit? Right now we're working on a, on a six-week release schedule. That's what we're aiming for. That's what we want to keep to. So we're going to be essentially one uh, 5.1, 5.2, 5.3 is going to be one month, and then the next month is going to be 6.1, 6.2, 6.3 as far as the missions and the chapters and the storyline and things like that. I'm sorry. No, it's each episode comes out every six weeks with our major patches. So 5.1 is six weeks. 5.2 just came out. Apps, well, actually, it's going to be a little bit shorter this time because we're a little bit late in getting this update out. But 
in between each update is going to be six weeks. And with each major update, it's going to be a new chap, a new sub chapter, and a new uh, set of critical critical missions. If you knew the player base wanted that to be a lot shorter, would that help? Um, we actually do know the player concerns about that. Uh, we don't have any solutions right now to that problem, um, but we will not be cranking them out faster. Um, but we will be looking at ways to improve the player experience on the six-week schedule. Okay. Can I comment? Absolutely. I am trying to write the outline for the next year. Tell them who you are. Tell them. Oh, this is Paul Chadwick. <laughs> so a little more happens in each chapter, and although there won't be new, more missions, or uh, there might be uh, more information coming at you in the other ways, the blogs, the rumors, the uh, Lessig live event things. In fact, I, I, I took some things that uh, were already in the outline and collapsed two months into one, for example. Okay. Uh, one, one quick question. The, all the blogs, the general blog, the general's blog and Cryptos' blog and all that, is that all you or are there other people working on that? Should I say? <laughs> you don't, you don't Go ahead. Answer. Yeah, that's all me. That's all me. So you can you can take it as gospel. That'll make a lot of people happy. You know that. All right. This is you, you can go on with this question, but I'm going to ask it. They want to know the truth about what happened to HC Frog. Uh, and, he, and 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 him him leaving. I guess. some people in, in the community, you know, you know how it is. They just what happened? What happened? That's just what they want to know. Uh, he got an opportunity on uh, another project, and he's working on that now. Well, we wish him the we wish, we wish him the best of luck. Yeah, uh, he appreciates it. Especially us spies. I know he did. A, I heard he did a lot of work for the spy tree. So, uh, actually, no. The dev who did most of the work on the spies is still with us. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. As far as l l less it goes, some of the events have been fantastic, absolutely wonderful, and some of the events. Mm -hmm. Have have gotten have not gotten the, the same reviews. I'll you know I'll just leave it like that. They've fallen exactly. flat. Yeah. yeah. Um, what? Is, how are you getting? Do you feel like you're getting the feedback that you need in order to make the changes and adjustments so that in the future they tend to go perfectly more often than than not? Okay. By the nature of live events, they are never, ever, ever going to go perfectly. That's just the way it well, works. But yeah, every time we do a live event, we take all the feedback in. We work on ways to improve where we fell down. We look at ways of doing things better. And yeah, I mean, we always want to improve them, always. Um, and I know that some players don't like how we've made some elements of the events more static, like object-based and things like that. But it's one of the ways to make an event bigger without having to use a huge number of people to run it from our end. But yeah, absolutely. We we get the feedback from from the community and we use it to make it better the next time. A couple of these are more requests than questions. <laughs> they, uh, they like for example, they want to be able to have the clothing be more flowing instead of your trench coat looking like it's been it's been starched like eight times. They, they want us to actually move around a little bit. Is there any chance of that happening? Uh, we are not going to be revamping the graphics engine anytime soon. I right. mean, that's what it would take. I mean, that's and that's a serious, serious, serious change to the game. There, so. there, there's no way to do any sort of animations with clothing options. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. How do you with the community now? Mm -hmm. and the, the way the community was at the end of beta, what, what changes have you seen and, and how do you feel about the way that they communicate with you? I mean, you know, we have some posts on, on, on the board that say, Chad, you're an idiot, and you know, it's like, and, and then we have other posts that say, this is absolutely wonderful. It's, it's kind of a love-hate relationship. Absolutely. How does, how does that affect you as a team and what are your thoughts on that? Well, I've been a community manager of one stripe or another for, I guess, something like six years now. Um, and I've been working on this game as a community manager for two years. I've uh, been producer for, I don't know, eons now. 
Thanks, Sarah. Um, and I, I've kind of, I've seen it all. I mean, it ebbs, it flows. The community is the community. And, it, you know, I, I guess the way that it affects me the most, uh, thank you, DJ, um, is that as long as I see that people are still passionate about this game, negative, positive, and uh, people still care, and it's worth continuing to put our heart and soul into the game. Um, so we take all the feedback, positive and negative. I mean, that's why you see me on there when people start hashing people for making negative posts about the game. It's like, no, if you do a well-constructed negative post, you're telling us things we need to know about developing the game. I mean, it's all good. Just, you know, tell it like it is and we're more than happy to listen. Sometimes we can't do anything about it, but if we can, we're definitely going to do it. What's your favorite feature in MXO right now? I mean, you personally. What's my favorite feature? Well, I guess that's, 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 that's kind of a broad question. What I think they want to know is, as far as like the abilities or buildings or animations, what's the one that, when you see like, you know, I like that. That's what I like. Or it's, you know, what is that? You, actually, I've, I've, I've posted on this a couple times. Um, I think the thing that, that really hits me is when, for example, I went to Fanfare this year and I was running the game on a really high-end rig and I realized that a year later this game keeps getting better looking and running smoother and I love the fact that a year from now when people who are buying mid-range systems have the same thing that people who have high-range systems have now they're gonna see this game moving smoothly and looking absolutely freaking gorgeous I think that's that's my favorite because it just gets better every year that we get more we get better equipment at a lower price. So you, the thing you like the best is your, your engine is written so that it could, will take a full advantage of new technologies. <laughs> um, that's one way to put it. Another way to put it was when we came out, it took a really high-end rig to run our game. Um, but you know, as years go by, people who can afford mid-range computers, low-range computers, will start seeing the game the way it should be. That excites me. I'm going to pay homage to Zippy. Do you like tacos? Tacos are great. <laughs> there you go, Zip. And why is that Zippy? Shouldn't, shouldn't that be Roken? No, it's Zippy. The <laughs> well, maybe, maybe they're both the same person. I don't know. Well, Zippy and Roken are two different people, but it's like uh, Roken's the infamous taco person, so. <laughs> all right. Oh, the, rest, the rest of Zippy's questions are all loaded through Plaza Plane Base, so I'm skipping over all of them. Let's see what we... Well, I can throw one in on the side. This is probably going to be a joke anyway, but I just have to ask it anyway. Is there any chance, before the game ever goes away, will we have boxers for male RSIs? Here we go again with the boxers. <laughs> I asked the same question to Walrus when I met him at E3. I was giddy now as I am when I first met him. And he knows this, and I'm actually wearing the hard-covered boxers in homage of this idea I made for Walrus. It's also on the chair. Yeah, he also turned the chair pink with those heart-covered boxers, just letting y'all know. Well, you have to understand, right now we don't have a slot for boxers on the male RSI. Now, the only thing I can think is that, you know, the females have the pantyhose slot, so it would be a lot easier to put a pantyhose slot on the males. So, you'll probably see that before you see boxer shorts in the Matrix Online. So, does that mean that at the next SOE block party I have to wear pantyhose? Yes. <laughs> Done. <Yay! laughs> Oops. But, but anyway, uh, let's move on to the serious questions. I just had to throw that in there. But uh. oh, I had a really serious question. I'm trying, I'm trying to find it right now. We are extremely organized here. There's a huge crowd of people gathered around Walrus, and pa Paul Chadwick even came over here to see what in the world Walrus, Walrus was saying. So. Most of, m most of what, what the community really wants to know is what's coming next. You know, we know everyone is really excited about about the White Hallway missions and being able to go and do special areas. And I think one of the biggest things a, a, a lot of players want is some way to create their own special content. You know, in, uh, for example, in Star Wars Galaxies, they can build their own cities and their own houses, and they can take their stuff and put it there. I know in the Matrix Online. It's, it's not really built so they can just go and build a building or something like that, but mm -hmm. players are looking for, for some way to have ownership of things in the game, either through a 
making a, a certain area, PvP or something like that, where you know this is just our area where they can play King of the Hill, or they can do their own special secret, secret missions right now. Is there anything like that coming that's going to give players more ownership of items in the game? Um, that's that's not currently in the plans. Uh, one of the one of the things you have to understand is we, you know, we've already got the big things like the white hallways, like the org abilities that we need to get tested and get in the game. Um, we also have some other things that have to be done internally. Um, I don't know if we can talk about yet um, that really have less to do with gameplay and have to do with overall game functionality. Um, and those types of items, I mean. Maybe there's a way we could figure out to do it, but right now it sounds like a lot of engineering and we just don't have the bandwidth to pull something like that off. Um, there are, one of the things that the team is doing now is looking into old systems that never quite got fully fleshed out, like the white hallways, um, and added into the game, and figuring out how close they are to completion and whether we can get them done and get them in the game. That's one of our major focuses right now. So. If there's something in there that's really close to completion that we can pull off, who knows? Maybe we can do it, but I wouldn't. I I can't say that we can do something like that right now. That makes me sad, but I understand. It makes me sad too. <laughs> I think it makes all of us sad here, but we're all what? very sad. You know, oh, but we can do something. Let me, let me ask a question. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> Remember that industrial area that Eric was working on with a nuclear reactor? And yep. Is that? on a shelf somewhere that it, it could be finished someday or I don't think it was that close to finishing unfortunately uh, that's, what one, Paul, that's one of the great matrix might have been yeah what Paul is referring to is is another area in the city that had been worked on before release it did not get completed um, so part of that I'm sure still exists but it's one of those things, I would love to take a look at it. I don't think we have the resources to finish it out. We'll have to see. How successful has the free trials been? Are, are people coming in and staying, or are people just going and creating a blue pill and then leaving? I mean, is it is it sticky? Without getting in trouble, because your marketing person's right watching this. Oh, she left. I can talk. Okay. Oh, no. Um, no, oh no, God. no. That was the community manager stepping out. Now the producer's stepping in. Um, it was actually really good for the Matrix Online. Um, it got us a lot of awareness. Um, it's not as sticky as we could have wanted it to be, but then again, you know, we want 100% of the people who try our game to stay. Nobody gets that. Not even WoW. Boo um, the WoW, boo the WoW. But anyway. So. Yeah, us and WoW, we're in the same boat. Yeah. Just so you know, I left WoW for me. That was Bravo. Bravo. That was Bravo. That she left World that of Warcraft. Was, that was oh. She had just announced that Damn. she left World of Warcraft for the Matrix. So if that says anything about the Matrix, it's good. So <laughs> Do we have any new content coming in the way of extra dungeons, things like that? Um, again, uh, adding things like dungeons is world engineering. What, one of the main problems with world engineering is we make a change like adding a dungeon to the game. Other than the sheer work it takes to put, into, put a dungeon into the game, that requires an entire download of the world again. So, I'm, I'm willing to do that. Yeah, I know a lot of people are. Um, again, don't currently have plans, but, but it's something well, we'll look into. Know. You so, never know. All right. Are there any questions from the crowd? We are running... It's, oh, great. My marketing person wants to ask a question. I'm scared now. What? RPI vendor? RPI vendor? Role-playing item oh, vendor? Yeah. The role-playing item vendor. Yeah, there was a post a while back made about... Rarebit uh, talked about there's going to be a vendor where people can buy items that are essentially useless, except for in role-play. You know, like just discs, uh, Viruses, they're just like a little item that doesn't really do anything, but they can email it to each other and use it for, for trading and things like that. Well, well, we do have a precedent for that now in the uh, archival missions. The early rewards are all items that don't actually have gameplay effects, but you know, you've got a little blue headlamp, you got the fly virus, you got the, you got the flame virus. Um, so we do have precedent for that, and that's all through a vendor system. Um, I don't know if he's finished out any designs for that, but that is something that is feasible in our game. A while ago, there were there was a lot of talk about re revamping the marketing system to make it work better. 
Whatever happened with that? Um, was it revamped and we just did, I did, uh, and we just didn't notice? Or <laughs> okay, can you honestly tell me that if the marketplace had been revamped, you would not have noticed? <laughs> I, was, I was out for a couple months, so you know. Uh, yeah, I wonder how that happened. Um, I, did oh. <laughs> I did something really stupid. <laughs> yes. The uh, punt. He's gonna that, that was that was as close as Walrus is gonna get to a nude punt ever. Yeah. <laughs> and he punted me. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, Score one for Nick and So anyway, uh, the design was completed on the marketplace revamp. Uh, basically, other things got in the way. Uh, getting combat revision 2.0 beca done became our primary focus. Um, whether we have the resources to finish that revamp, I do not know at this point. That again is one of those things like other systems that we will be looking at to say, can we do this? If we can, obviously we would like to. Do you feel like the Combat Revision 2.0 was worth it? Do you, are you happy with the way it turned out? I am happy with the Combat Revision as it works in the I'm I'm happy with the way the combat system works in the game, yes. Um, it took a lot out of our team. It was a hell of a lot of work. I really have to give props to everybody on the team who worked on that because they, you've never seen crunch time like these guys put in. Um, and I'm community, community relations and producer. I don't program. I don't know the code of the game. So all I could do was be there, buy them food, make sure they had everything that they needed to keep going. Um, it took a hell of a lot of effort. Um, I know the guys were a little crispy after we were done. Um, in the end, it's definitely worth it as far as the game is, is concerned. Um, it would have been nice if it had been a little bit easier on the guys. Are they okay? With, are, are they getting better now? <laughs> yeah, we actually had one guy finally take some vacation uh, a year after coming to SOE. Very nice. Um, I'd just like to throw this in there. I know a lot of people, especially myself, when we heard about their new combat revision and all this, personally I was like looking, not looking forward to it. It was just a lot of mixed emotion. A lot of us were like that, but... A lot of that was because we were really scared because of what Sony did to Star Wars Galaxies. Well, I had heard. I never, I didn't want to jump the gun and say anything like that, but like, you know, there was a lot of mixed emotion. Personally, I'll admit it. I was, I had mixed feelings about it, but... It's more like getting used to it and all that stuff. Personally, I love the new combat revision. I mean, at first, like I said, mixed feelings, but then I didn't know it, and I'm sure a lot of us were like that here. I'm seeing a couple of nodded heads and all that, but now with the new combat revision, I love it. I mean, I love the whole new setup and the dual hotbars. By the way, kudos on the dual hotbars. That is very nice. I, can we give them a round of applause for the dual hotbars, folks, and the combat revision? Let, 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 let the developers know that more inventory After space. we got through it all, we really, we're, we're, we're overall, as a community, we're, we overall really do like it. We do. But, you know, like you are saying before, we're, we're passionate about the game, so if we feel there's, there's something that we don't like, it's good that we'll, we'll let you know about it. You know, we try not to mince words, most of Although, that does happen on the forum some.